Dean on Long Island. Hey, Dean. Hey, Eddie. I have a very slow question. I'm kidding. There was a quick question. Very slow question. All right. Uh, I, you did a, you did like a hidden gem show uh, maybe a year and a half ago. You turned me on to Icon. I had never heard of him, and I'm I'm your I'm the same age as you, so I don't know where I was. And Coney Hatch, which I had heard of, uh, but I kind of revisited them. Uh, you know, I think it's time for another one of those. Uh, you know, get the listeners involved. Uh, just uh, records that you know, as you say, it you know it didn't really do much, but was still great records. Uh, that kind of came out, you know, bands uh, bands that I love that have uh, Heavy Bones, they called Neverland, Baton Rouge, you know, stuff in that genre. That great records didn't do anything, but still, uh, I love hearing from other listeners that may have they may have some suggestions. Just yeah, you know, thought. Dean, you know, Dean, you being in New York, Long Island, I don't know if you've heard yeah. the show that I've done for years on Friday nights on Q104. Yeah. So. So when I used to do that show, that show's pre-recorded now, but for years I did it live. And when I did do it live, I used to do a feature on there called Underground Classic, which is exactly what you were talking about. I used to play one of those bands every week. So okay. uh, what I could do, though, you know, what wouldn't be a bad idea. I, I don't know if I would do it here on this show, but I, I have the show here five days a week on volume. Right. Might be cool yep, to spotlight right. a band in that maybe once a week. At some point in the week, like on a Wednesday or a Monday or something, sort of spotlight what I would maybe I'd even use the same name, like you know, Underground Classic, and feature one of those bands weekly, a little bit of the song and a little backstory on them. Not a bad idea, Dean. Yeah. I like doing that yeah. stuff. Maybe cool. I'll incorporate it into one of the shows. Great, great. Keep it going, Eddie. Awesome. Thank you, Bye. Dean. Hey, Kev, you're on the air. Hey, uh, my name's Cameron. Oh, I'm sorry. They wrote Kevin. Uh, no worries. Um, I'm a huge Iron Maiden fan. I'm like 18 years old, been rocking with heavy metal all my life. Love your show. And, uh, my question to you is how would you feel about Bruce Dickinson and the Iron Maiden gang doing the four albums that Bruce was never on X Factor, Virtual XI, Iron Maiden and Killers and reproducing those and doing a tour for those four albums? Mm -hmm. I'd be real interested in the first two records. I wouldn't be so interested in the two Blaze Bailey records just because I didn't think they were great records like most, and I didn't really spend a lot of time even listening to them. Now, if you're telling me that they were gonna they would go in and re-record the material with Bruce and maybe re retool it in some ways, maybe. Yeah. But I'd I'd be way interested in the. The two Deano records, though, because the first album and Killers are great records. Yeah, they are. I don't think, Kevin, that ever would stand a chance in happening, But or Cameron, I'm sorry. But I, do, I don't know if you're aware that on this upcoming Iron Maiden tour, there are two songs from the Blaze Bailey records in the set list. Is that the Klansmen? Is that what they're, one of them is going to be? And I think sign of, is it one of the songs "Sign of the Cross" or "Sign of"? Yeah, "Sign of Sign of the Cross." So I think those two are included. So interestingly enough, Iron Maiden. I mean, Steve Harris clearly stands behind those Blaze records because two songs in the upcoming tour, and they've done this before, are going to be included. Two songs from the Blaze era. Oh, I'm excited for the Maiden tours. I'm seeing them and. And Washington, probably Vegas, and Phoenix. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, Cameron, you enjoy those shows. Thank you. I think that you're I, – I don't think there's ever a chance that what you're thinking about or wondering about would ever happen. But I understand your logic or your thought for bringing it up because it is a pretty interesting idea. There are a total of four records in the Maiden catalog that Bruce Dickinson are not is not singing on. I would think it would be to me it would be more interesting for them to be re recorded with the current band. Again, that's something that probably would never happen. I don't know how many people realize they did do a re recorded version of Wrathchild with Bruce Dickinson singing it. 
I'm not sure if Cameron heard that or a lot of Iron Maiden fans know that. I don't even know if it's in our database here. If it is, I'll play it. But they did, I forget what they did it for, but they did a re-record of Wrathchild from the Killers record, originally with Paul Diano, of course, on vocals, and recut the vocals with Bruce singing it. I have to see if it's in our system. I'll play that for you guys if it is. Okay, so I'm seeing something here that says Wrathchild 81. So that would be the Deano version. And it wasn't live. It was a studio recording of, of Wrathchild. I don't think they recorded all the instruments over. I just think they wiped the vocal and had Bruce record it. I'm seeing a few live versions of Wrathchild. God, there's like four live versions here. Uh, I'll keep looking. If I can find it, I'll go back into music by playing the Dickinson version of Wrathchild, which is about the closest you're going to get to, you know, Bruce tackling some of that stuff, at least in the studio. Nah, I don't see it here. It doesn't look like they have it. It's got a number of versions labeled live. I wonder if it's mislabeled. Oh, well, I'll try to get it on for you in one of the coming weeks if I can't find it tonight. Let's get one or two more quick calls, and we'll get back to some music here. How about we say hello to Keith, and he is in North Carolina. Hi, Keith. Hey, Eddie. Um, I ran into you in the green room of the Whiskey uh, for the uh, show for the uh, the End Machine. Oh, right. Okay. The new uh, the George Lynch project. Uh-huh. And I was just wondering. I mean, I have not heard any radio play. I was hoping to catch it on on Air Nation once in, uh, Air Nation once in a while. And I mean, is it played anywhere? Anywhere? Because it'd be great to hear. I think it's a great album. And the only place I heard it is there because my cousin is the lead singer. Robert? Yeah, yeah. Robert's my cousin, yeah. Oh, okay. I've known Robert forever. Robert's originally from New Jersey, as you know. Yeah, well, I'm from New York. I just happen to be in North Carolina for a business trip. So, yeah, I, I've known Robert uh, my whole life since I'm, uh, well, two months of my whole life since I'm a couple months older than he is. Yeah. Well, the problem, the problem Keith, is this. I've played it a few times, and you know what? I'll play a track right now going uh, back into music in a second. Uh, I like the the record. I like the band. Couple problems. First of all, virtually impossible for any of these artists, especially artists with a history in the 80s, as that band is, to get airplay. Secondly, virtually impossible. The record label that released that record releases records almost daily, and it's very, very difficult uh, for them to get. They're an Italian-based record label, and although they have people here in America that work their records, very, very difficult for them to get a shot at any at, at any traction with airplay. And the, and then the third component that makes selling that extremely difficult is the fact that, as you well know, Robert is the lead singer in Warrant, and he's busy with that. George is out in three or four different bands at the same time. Jeff Pilsen is in Foreigner. If you are not touring and actively working something on a daily basis, you have about as much chance of hitting the lottery as you do of truly selling it and getting awareness for it. So those are all the things working against a band like that and a record like that. Uh, nothing to do with the quality of the record. I agree with you. It's a really good record. But if you are not fully committed to it, they did three live shows total. If you're not fully committed to it, out there working it in every city, doing press, touring it, and out there on your own, really going for it and committed, you you the records like that sadly are over about three days after they come out. And that's just the truth. It sucks, but I see it literally happening every day. Um, I I agree, and I, you know I I follow Robert, and I see him in Warrant wherever he goes. I've been again, I've been supporting him for years. I just thought something of this magnitude with George in it and Jeff and the guy from Evanescence killed it that night. 
yeah, I well, thought maybe that this would at least get a little airplay. So. No, it's Thank not. You, Eddie. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame, Keith. Thank you for the call, but it's just not.